Today we're going to be talking about three very special watches. This feature came from a discussion that the three of us had a few months back about if somebody wanted to buy a true watch, a real high-end watch for $20,000 at most, what would you buy? And I'm not talking about a vintage Rolex Submariner with, uh, with an underline on the dial or a gilt dial, something like that. I'm talking about true in-house watchmaking. So the three watches we've chosen for you that we think represent the best value for under $20,000 are the FP Jordan Chronometry Blue, the Vacheron Constantin Patrimony Traditional, and then the Elon and Sohn Saxonia. So Stephen, could you tell us about your time with the FP Jordan? So I spent a week with the FP Jordan Chronometer Blue. You've got a 39 millimeter pantalon case. It's hefty, like platinum maybe, but it's much harder and much more scratch resistant than that. The aesthetics of this watch kind of let it cross over between being a dress watch and being a casual watch. It's thin, it fits nicely under a cuff. And if you turn the watch over, you just have this really amazing modern movement looking back at you from behind the sapphire glass. So I spent a week with Long's entry-level watch, the Saxonia. The case is made of red gold. It houses an immaculately finished movement, the Long Caliber 941.1. It's made of German silver, and it has this beautiful, creamy, golden-toned hue that really screams quality. The watch measures 37 millimeters in diameter. It fits under a shirt cuff, and it's a perfect dress watch for everyday wear. The watch that I spent some time with is Vacheron's classical dress watch. It's the Patrimony Traditionnel. It's 38 millimeters in diameter. It houses the in-house caliber 4400. 4400 is really kind of a benchmark movement for Vacheron. It kind of brought them into the modern era in terms of in-house movements. So this is manually wound 65 hour power reserve, which is rather impressive with a single barrel. It is beautifully finished, truly traditional architecture. Geneva seal, really just an excellent, excellent movement. The FP Journe costs $19,890, the Vacheron costs $19,900, and the Longue is $18,600. Paul, why is this watch the least expensive Longue? One of the main reasons is the movement used. It's really derived from their very first caliber. It's a little bit small for the case. The Saxonia was transformed pretty much in 2007 from its original design in 94 when it included a large date function. So it just displays the time now. And so with that, the movement's a lot less expensive to make. Here we have something that's very modern. You have a double barrel system, which gives you 56 hours of power reserve. Then it looks like you have the balance over on the right all by itself. But actually what Jorn has done here is you have one wheel between the two barrels, and the rest of the going train has been hidden between the main plate and the dial. So you get this kind of illusion that the free sprung balance is sitting off on its own because essentially the whole train system is hidden between the base plate and the dial. I mean, that could offer potentially some issues with servicing down the road. Would it be something that your average watchmaker would even want to tackle? For servicing, I think you're going to have to go through FP Journe. The FP Journe case back actually uses special screws that only FP Journe watchmakers are really able to get off. When this movement first came out, I read a review of it by Kari Gultuline. And Kari, as, as many of you know, is one of the modern legends of traditional watchmaking. And he took a look at this movement and said, you know, this is just a supremely well-decorated, incredibly serviceable, long-lasting movement. It really is just beautiful to look at, could be operated on by somebody well-trained in watchmaking. It doesn't necessarily have to go back to Vacheron. I actually think this is one of the best movements and best watches that Vacheron makes, period, at any price point. The Jordan, I mean, it's really much more casual. I personally don't put on a suit and tie every day. For somebody with my sort of lifestyle where I, I do need to have the flexibility, if I was going to invest the $20,000, I like the Journe just because it's a watch I can wear pretty much anywhere. I like the density and the heft of something like a platinum watch or a white gold watch. But the nice thing about the tantalum is wearing it on the subway to work. I don't have to worry if I nick it on a pole that I'm going to put a huge dent or a huge scratch in the case that can't be fixed. Journe makes 900 watches per year or thereabouts. Longue makes around, say, between five and 10,000, and Vacheron makes around, say, 15, 20,000, roughly. So you're getting something that is far more rare and potentially even more interesting with the FP Jordan. I mean, so say if they make 900 watches per year, and, you know, this is just one of, say, six or seven or eight, nine models that Jordan makes, you know, you're not going to see too many of these out there. That's compelling. This is designed from the ground up, like all of Jordan's watches, in-house, with a focus on chronometry and accuracy. And for an engineer like me, it's something that appeals to me your focus on timekeeping accuracy. We talked about servicing of the Vacheron in the way that it would be relatively easy. And with the Journe, it would be potentially more difficult because of the architecture and because of the screw heads and the case back, etc. Where does the Longa fall? The movement's really robust. 
However, to assemble it is a challenge because you have to align every gear and pivot in the going train to fit within the jewels on the bridge. It could take hours if you don't have the right tool. So if you go to a watchmaker outside of Longa, I think the service cost might be high. They're all within two millimeters of each other. We've got the Longa at 37, the Vacheron at 38, and the Journe at 39. What's funny is the Journe wears much larger than the Longa, even though they're only two millimeters apart. Honestly, I think 37 millimeters is an absolutely great size for a dress watch. And the fact that Long designed it in this manner with a thin bezel, it makes it wear larger than 37 millimeters. For a dress watch, I would agree with Paul. I mean, I think 37 is a pretty perfect size. That said, I didn't find this 39 millimeter case to be too big. The case is really slim. The lugs kind of hug the wrist nicely. I think 38 millimeters is a great happy medium for a real dress watch. That said, I think the Journe sits better on the wrist than the Vacheron. Just in terms of wearability, this watch is, is really superb. I think the Longa is great as well. It really hugs a little bit better than I thought it would, and it doesn't look small on my wrist. And 37 for a modern watch sounds small. But overall, I think all three of these watches are, are deserving of certainly your attention and potentially your money down the road. This is kind of something that you'd be looking for. 